What is up NextFab? My name is Skylar. I'm a technical supervisor at NextFab. Today I'm going to take this uh, quartz crystal and make it into a nice tab set pendant. Uh, the reason why we're going to be doing tab settings is because it's a type of cold connection and it allows you to make a lot of really cool stone settings without utilizing a torch. So if you've just taken intro to jewelry at NextFab, this will be a great first project. Okay, so these are the materials that we're going to be using for today's project. I have the quartz crystal, which will be what we set in the tab setting. I've got two types of base metal. This is copper and this is brass. I recommend sticking to the base metals if you're new to jewelry just because silver is going to cost you a pretty penny and these guys are pretty cost effective and will be great for your final project. This guy is a gauge plate which will help you determine the thickness of your sheet metal and the reason why I bring that up is because we want to make sure we're working in a certain thickness, right? So if the material itself or the metal is too thin, it's not going to be strong enough to hold your pendant. If it's too thick, it's going to be really difficult to set the tabs over the stone. So I'd recommend working around 20 gauge. So here are the other materials you're going to need to help design your pendant. Uh, this sharpie marker is going to be used to kind of trace the outline of the stone onto the sheet material. You also, I should note, you want to make sure you have enough sheet material that the tabs can kind of extend outward beyond your stone. If you're working with, say, a piece of material that's only this big, you're going to run into a lot of trouble making sure that the tabs are big enough. So make sure that you have excess material around your stone. Um, and then I have here, besides my um, Sharpie marker, are two sets of calipers. These are analog, this is digital. It doesn't matter which kind you have, but you're going to be using this to kind of help you determine how uh, big or long you want your tabs to be. So all these tools are necessary. Make sure you round them up. So here we have more materials that you'll need to help make your pendant. A uh, simple jeweler saw, some blades. I recommend using 2 watt if you're going to be cutting 20 gauge, and then Burlife if you need some help lubricating your blades while you're cutting. These are the materials that you're going to need for finishing off this project. Uh, I've got a file. I prefer a number two beret file. Some type of sanding stick. Uh, parallel pliers or any type of flat nose pliers, that's the important part, that the tips are flat. And then some type of tool that you can use for setting. A bezel rocker is not necessary for this type of project. You can even, if you don't have a bezel rocker, you could also use the wedge that comes from your ring clamp to push the tabs over. So we're going to take the stone and we're going to decide which side we want facing out. I, because this stone has a lot of irregularities uh, from side to side, I chose the side that was most regular, would be easiest to trace, so that way I just don't run into any difficulties when it comes to setting. Um, I'm also going to measure the thickness of the stone because that will help determine the length of the tag. This stone in particular is about seven millimeters thick. So I want my tab to maybe be two or three millimeters longer than that. So um, if that was rounded up to seven, let's say we want my tabs to be 10 millimeters long. So I'm gonna trace my stone, make a bunch of tabs that are all 10 millimeters long, and then I'll also determine where I want my bale. And then once I get the full perimeter of the stone, I can take it off of the sheet metal. You can see I have a rough outline of what I'm going to be cutting out. And now I want to put my tabs um, in their respective places. So I'm going to say one on each side at the very least. Um, I'm going to do two on each side just to make it fun and longer. And then I'm also going to put a bale right here. So. I want this pendant to hang this way. Depending on however you want your pendant to hang, that's where you're going to put your bail. Alright, so I marked where I want my tabs to go, and the way I kind of figured it out was that I measured 5 millimeters in from each corner, and I didn't actually measure the silhouette of each tab because I wanted to show you guys this little trick. 
I want my tabs to end up looking somewhat like this in the end. I don't know if the camera can focus on it. <laughs> but I want them to be pointed and I want them to be decorative. And I knew if I tried to draw this silhouette like, I don't know, eight different times, it wasn't going to come out the same. So all I did with my jeweler saw was cut off a little piece of this sheet and file the tip that I want to be my final edge. And now what I can do is take this and kind of use it as a tracing template and mark all the tabs all the way around on my pendant. So I've got my design all mapped out and I also put a clear um, scotch tape over it so that when I go to start sawing it that the oils and the sweat from my palm don't rub off the sharpie marker and keeps the design intact on the metal. Um, I've got my jeweler saw blade all loaded up in my jeweler saw frame and it is lubricated with my burr life so that it does not snag when I go to cut. So I'm going to start cutting and when I go to cut I'm going to be sure to cut on the inside of the lines just because the thickness of the fine uh, point sharpie marker adds a pretty significant amount of material when you go and you cut on the outside. So I don't want that excess. I'm going to cut on the inside. We're coming to the end. Um, just a little bit of sawing advice. The hardest thing about this is probably going to be navigating corners, right? Your blade isn't really meant to do a quick 90. So whenever you get to a corner like this one here, just saw in place for a few seconds to open up the kerf and then it will allow you to turn your blade. <laughs> this weird little thing is gonna turn into jewelry. I spent a good amount of time filing and sanding all the edges and the surfaces and I think we're ready to form the tabs into a setting. So looking at the stone, this was my side that should be down and it's gonna sit on the sheet of metal like this. We want to line up the tab and the edge of the parallel plier like this. And I'm going to use that straight edge on the parallel plier to reference where I'm going to bend it at a perfect 90 degrees. So, so now I can drop my stone in there. I might have to open up the tabs a little bit in certain spots. Alright guys, so once you kind of get, when you're going to push over your tabs, you want to start at the base and move up. You're not going to uh, attack it all at once. That will lead to bad results and potentially cracking the stone. So instead you're going to kind of want to put force towards the bottom and shimmy your way up. And because these are going to be going over the top of my stone, I'm then going to add pressure down. And I'm using my wooden wedge for my ring clamp to push it down because, I, again, I don't want to crack this delicate stone. So this guy, this prong is going to be a little weird because it's in a situation that's kind of like cut off. But it works. Look at that. My stone is jacked. While all the tabs were going up and around your stone, this bale is going to be bent backwards to make a loop and that will be the loop that you thread your chain through. So. I forgot to mention the use of round nose pliers in the beginning, oops, sorry guys, in the beginning of this video, but um, you'll want to have these guys to do this trick. Ta-da! I just want to say thank you so much for joining me on my first ever Next Fab Make Along Quarantine Craft Edition. Um, I hope you all made a beautiful pendant with a beautiful stone, beautifully set with tabs. Uh, if you have any questions or something that maybe I didn't go as in depth as you needed me to, um, you can feel free to email me at skylar.bradford at nextfab.com and I'll try to answer any questions you have. Thank you for tuning in. Bye guys!